Hey guys, how's it going? BCHD here and welcome back to episode number 6 of the part of my Road to Glory career mode on FIFA 19. We are back with another big, big episode. We're still second in Serie A after 24 games. We've got some Europa League action to cover this episode. We've got some Serie A crucial games as well. We've got Europa League round of 16 against CSK in Moscow. I'm going to finish off the episode with a game against Inter in the first leg of the semi-final of the Coppa Italia. We're going to finish off against Palermo at home as well. So we've got a big, big month ahead of us in this career mode. I'm going to kick things off against Torino at home at the Stadio Enio Tardini. And we've got a pretty strong starting 11 here. We've got Roche in there, our youth academy player. Shaparenko makes it in there as well. Uh, pretty rotated, uh, kind of a rotated side. Galliolo starts at centre-back, but Roche... Our Youth Academy player gets us off to a great start here against Torino in the 15th minute. Gets a goal, but picks up an injury three minutes later. Munir gets the equaliser right before half time. Gomez gets the second goal. Bonifazzi gets a red card, but Liz Malou gets another equaliser for Torino. The 10 men of Torino get a point here in Parma. And unfortunately, we couldn't take the three points after Bonifazzi gets a, a red card. Sorry, so... We have another simulated game here against Kievo Verona away at the Bendegordi uh, in Verona. So Kievo not doing too well in real life, currently sitting at the bottom of Serie A, but we're going to face them away from home. We've got Lombardi, another youth academy player. We've got Kangin Lee, a January loan signing that we picked up. Pellegri, Lainez and Sancho in there as well, but Harau for Kievo gets a goal, but luckily Sancho picks up the equaliser, so we get... Another draw in today's episode in the first two matches of Serie A. So at least we didn't lose, but we have another crucial home match against Cagliari at the Stadio Enio Tardini. And as you can see there, from those two draws, uh, we've let the teams below us, such as Inter and AC Milan, catch up to us in second place. So it's a bit tight in the top four, top five. As we go into this game against Cagliari at home, Valle in the seventh minute gets the Sardinians underway here, away from home, but Chong gets the Equalizer there in the 30th minute uh, before half time. Roche comes off with another injury. I mean, this guy is so injury prone. He's gotten two injuries in today's episode, but it's going to finish 1 1. Three draws in a row in Serie A, and we've let uh, the competition below us get closer to us in the table. And it's going to be a real tight finish in today's episode in the Serie A table. But Allegri goes up to a 76, uh, but because of the training glitch, he still remains at a 75. It's a glitch. That's so annoying and just makes training just useless and just irrelevant because you can't really grow any players. So uh, probably won't be showing training until that training glitch gets fixed in career mode. But we're up against CSK and Moscow on the first leg of the Europa League round of 16. This is where the competition gets heated as we're off to Moscow. We're off to Russia again as we faced uh, another Moscow team, Spartak Moscow, in the round of 32. We're up against their rival, CSKA Moscow, in the second, uh, in the round of 16. Sorry. So we've got the first leg away at their home ground in Russia. Another away day trip for the Parma fans in Europe. And then we're back at the Stadio Enio Tardini uh, for the second leg. But this is a big, big game for Parma, and it's probably one of the biggest games of this career mode as we're into season number two now. Hopefully, trying to get some Champions League football for next season, but uh, we want to go as far as we can, just in case we don't qualify for the Champions League in Serie A. We want to go as far as we can in the Europa League to ensure that we get some Champions League football next season. Hopefully, go on to win it. As you can see, CSKA Moscow nearly got off to the perfect start, but... Uh, our goalkeeper saves it pretty well as they get a corner from this. Uh, they get it into the box. Uh, their player on the edge of the box takes a shot, but Plitzardi was uh, equal to it. And he makes a second big save of this match as we continue on into their penalty area. Jaden Sancho gives it off to Lainez. And their keeper, Akinfeev, makes a wonderful save there to keep it at nil-nil. But we cross it into the box. Pellegrini gets it. He shoots. And Akinfeev makes another great save. We give it off to Lee. 
and somehow Akinfeev keeps it out and it remains nil-nil in this Europa League uh, round of 16 match. As we continue on, Jaden Sancho down at this left-hand side, causing some trouble. Kangin Lee gives it off to Sandro Tonali, and he scuffs the chance there to put us 1-0 up to get a crucial away goal. Sandro Tonali, one of the, the beating hearts of our team, but in the second half, straight off kickoff, we get things underway, finally breaking the deadlock. After the first half, we couldn't get it into the goal. We finally make the play straight off kickoff, and it's a beautiful ball in from Pellegrini. We get the game underway. Jaden Sancho, the Englishman, slotting it under the legs of Akinfeev, getting a nutmeg on the keeper, and we get a crucial way goal in this round of 16 match in the first leg, and it's a beautiful goal for Jaden Sancho, our star player of this part of our side, as we continue on in this game. We uh, see this came Moscow nearly replied straight away, but we're back on the attack. It's Pietro Pellegrini using his strength, and Akinfeev makes a great save from the, the young Italian striker's shot there. But Jaden Sancho is in the middle again, gives it to Gomes, and he finds Lainez and the Mexican. Our summer signing for season number two comes up big again for us in this episode. Gets our second away goal of the game in the 83rd minute, sealing the victory for us here in Russia. It's another away day Europa League victory. And Lainez with a beautiful finish with the left foot, slots it into the left, uh, the top left-hand corner. Akinfeev couldn't get his glove to that one, and he's been playing so well for us this season. Probably our best player, our best signing, Diego Lainez, and it's... Uh, Again, it was you guys who told me to sign him. I'm really enjoying playing with him. He's gotten us the second crucial away goal for us in this game. And we end up finishing 2-0 victors against CSK in Moscow. We go into our second game. As you can see, their stamina is really an issue for us as we got this pile-up of games. We've got Europa League games, Serie A games, Coppa Italia games. And yeah, the stamina issue is getting to us uh, definitely in this episode. I had to do a lot of rotating uh, in this episode to ma maintain our stamina because uh, the stamina issue was really big and I think that's something we need to improve. We're down to third in Serie A. We've got a game against Roma at the Stadio Olimpico, a big clash for us and it's going to determine if we get Champions League football or not in the long run. It did determine this game last season at the Stadio Olimpico, did determine if we did get Europa League football or not. So. Uh, we've got a bit of a European rivalry here with Roma as we continue on uh, in this game. Kubo makes a start and he's got on us off to a great start here as he cuts back inside after a beautiful run down the right hand side. A bit of individual brilliance from the Japanese playmaker and it's Kubo. We gave him a start and he's rewarded us here with the opening goal at the Stadio Olimpico. 13 minutes in Roma all over the place defensively wise and Kubo cuts inside with the left boot, puts it past Olsen in net and the number eight for Parma gets us underway. It's actually a Senjo in net, sorry for Roma. But yeah, 1-0 up at the Stadio Olimpico. What more can you ask for? Kubo gets us off to a great start and the boys celebrating there, loving the away day scenes in Serie A after we need. We need a win here as Brignola squares it to Chong and it could have been 2-0 in the opening 25 minutes. The uh, man from the Netherlands couldn't slot that into the bottom hand corner. He was using his weaker foot, his right, his right foot. And unfortunately, skied that one over the bar. Should have hit the target there, but unfortunately for us, couldn't do so as uh, Roma here on the attack. It's Cruz uh, getting a shot away on his fellow German, Fructal. Uh, but Fructal was equal to it and saved it out for a corner as Max Cruz did score against us in our last meeting with Roma. But we continue on here at the Stadio Olimpico uh, in the second half, the 55th minute. Roma get a shot away there, hits the post, and luckily for us, uh, it is not a goal for Roma as they continue on trying to get the equalizer here for their home fans. It's Strutman on this right hand side. We can't contain him here as we're trying to tackle him down. He keeps going using his strength. The ball nearly goes out. He crosses it in. And that has got to be the softest goal that I've ever conceded in. Nah, on FIFA 19, definitely the softest goal I've conceded. It was terrible defending from us. We couldn't contain Strutman. But look what happens here. Strutman crosses it in. The ball nearly went out. It was on the line, actually. And Pastore was waiting at the back post. You can get a better replay of it on this angle. You can see Pastore waiting for it there. Hits it 
it comes off uh, Fructus' armpit, hits the ground, and dribbles over the line. So, oh my gosh, what a goal. Pastore gets the equaliser for Roma. It doesn't matter how you score them, but that one's a real heartbreaker for us after we worked so hard to get the opening goal. Pastore gets a soft goal on us, and it looks like it gone, it's gone from bad to worse as Kubo, the Japanese man that got us underway here at the Stadio Olimpico, getting the first goal, ends up in the 78th minute conceding a penalty penalty for us uh, letting Roma get back into this game to get the three points after we, we, we were one nil up and it's uh, Stindl getting on the penalty spot can Fructu make a save and he does keeping it at 1-1 it could have easily been Roma to make it 2-1 but thankfully to Fructu uh, Stindl his fellow countrymen aimed it to the right, we guessed the right way, and Fructu makes a penalty save there for Roma, rescuing the one point for us at the Olympico after it could have been a disaster, it would have been a nightmare for us if we let those three, uh, if we let the point slip away, but it's another draw in Serie A, we're off to the Europa League, round of 16, and I decided to simulate it after we got those two away goals, but CSKA Moscow weren't uh, mucking around here in this game, it's Magnussen getting the goal there, we end up skipping and uh, it's a 3-2 defeat but on away goals we go through, uh, on aggregate sorry, we go through, we ended up winning 4-3 on aggregate, uh, we got two goals in uh, Russia, two goals at home but CSKA and Moscow actually did really well at the Stadio Anil Tardini getting three goals there and if it wasn't for a goal from Waya we would have been out of the Europa League so by the skim of our teeth, we go through and we find out our next opponent. The man reveals us out of the draw and we can see who our quarterfinal opponents are. And it's the team we just drew to, Roma. And it's the team that we pipped to Europa League football. But it seems like they got it as well uh, last season. So it didn't really matter for them. We end up getting Roma, Everton pull Schalke, Spurs pull Liverpool, and Real Betis pull AZ Alkmaar, I believe they are. Team from the Netherlands. So a few decent teams in there. So it's Liverpool, Spurs, and Everton. Schalke in there, a really decent uh, team. Uh, and also um, AZ Alkmaar and Real Batiste in there as well. A few weak opposition, a few good opposition. So we're going to see if we make it to the semi-finals. I mean, it's going to be really tough against Roma. We've had a bit of a rivalry in them in this season. And somehow the simulation system on career mode never fails to surprise you every day. Gomez gets a penalty in the first minute. And also in the first minute, he misses the second penalty. I don't, I don't understand how... He, in one minute, two penalties can be awarded, both uh, got and conceded, but it is Gaston Ramirez getting the equalizer for Sampdoria, Adams getting the second goal, but Jaden Sancho pulls it back in the 78th minute to get us the 2-2 draw, and I literally can't remember the last time we won simulating a game in Serie A, like we've literally drawn every game in Serie A this episode, it's been crazy, but um, that is just the luck of the draw, but we go into the first leg of the Coppa Italia semi-final. It's going to be at the San Siro and we are facing Inter Milan here with a currently team that is just drained of stamina. We've had so many competitions to deal with and I feel like next season we really need to improve our squad depth and get a few more players in uh, the transfer window after we get a bit more money into the transfer budget. Hopefully getting a bit more depth into this squad because competing in three competitions is really draining this squad of their uh, stamina as we go into this game against Inter. It's Nine Golan getting things underway here. Nearly gets the opening goal for Inter in the opening four minutes as Inter not messing around here. Deli Ali is through on goal. He hits it and Fructu thankfully makes the save there, keeping it at nil-nil. But Inter in this first five minutes, we're not messing around. And unfortunately for us, a cross in the middle gets us Inter underway in the 10th minute he was a beautiful whip into the middle and I believe it was Mauro Icardi getting the header to it Fructu couldn't keep that one out it's another header from Delhi uh, from Mauro Icardi there and Fructu could save that one thankfully but Lombardi our youth academy player puts it through to Timothy Weyers through on goal against Handanovic and Handanovic gets the slightest of touches onto that board to it out for a corner and we couldn't uh, make the most of that chance there but, but Lombardi making another chance here it's Lainez through he cuts inside and he gets another goal this episode the man on form the Mexican 
coming through with a clutch goal here to get an away goal at the San Siro to take it back home. And it was a beautiful ball in from Lombardi, a youth academy prospect that we promoted to the senior team. The Italian put a lovely ball in. Diego Lainez did the rest. A bit of individual brilliance there. Uh, he fended off a defender, cut inside and slotted it in the bottom right hand corner. It's his first goal in the Coppa Italia as well. So really good stuff for him as Tonali puts the ball through to Lainez again. He's trying to find his second. But this time Handanovic makes a comfortable save in the second half there. As we continue on this semi-final, Icardi gives the ball off to Gaia. Gaia gives it back to Deli Ali, but Fructu, oh, he's had a really good game and an episode as well. He's made a crucial save there as we continue on in the semi-final. We could have gone on to get our second goal, but Brignola couldn't convert there and... Uh, we could have ended up winning it, Brignola just putting it wide, but Inter on a final attack here. It's Saint Maximin in the box here. He's going to cut back. He gives it off to Mauro Icardi, a player that seems to always score against us. And in the 92nd minute, gets the second goal to win it uh, in this first leg. But thankfully, it's only the first leg, and we can make it up. Uh, to the fans at home after we should have held on for the draw. We should have even maybe even won it with that Brignola chance at the end. But unfortunately, Inter make the most of their chance, catching us off guard. Inter, I mean, Icardi gets his second goal of the match and it puts him 2-1 up on aggregate. But we're going to go back home and hopefully win in the second leg. As you can see here, we've got a Serie A game. It's a regional rivalry against Sassuolo, um, the uh, Emilio Romagna derby. Uh, it's a regional derby and we're going to go into it here. They are in fourth position. So it's a regional derby and it's also a derby in terms of the standings as well. Uh, they are currently one point behind us in fourth after 29 games played. Inter just above us after beating us in the Coppa Italia semi-final. AC Milan in fifth, Lazio in sixth. Napoli in 7th as well, just outside those European places. So a few big teams not really performing that well. So Swallow in 4th. Uh, so we're going to see how we perform against them at home uh, in the Serie A. Hopefully we can get our first win of the of the game, of the, sorry, of the episode. Because we haven't really won in the Serie A this episode. We've really focused on other competitions. But David gets us started here. The Canadian gets us the goal in the 8th minute to break the deadlock. And we continue on in the second half here. Sassuolo playing a really decent side. Boateng still there. Teixeira, Berardi, Di Francesco as well. So they're playing a really decent team. Sensi in there as well. But nothing much really happening in this second half. And we end up holding on for that 1-0 victory. The first win of this episode. And we get it. We get one up on our regional rivals. And also uh, get it uh, three points for in the table. And hopefully uh, securing second spot in this episode. Because... Be real, being realistic, we're not going to win the Scudetto. Juventus are just too many points ahead of us. So we've got to hope for uh, finishing in Champions League spots. As Mergia gets a goal in against Palermo in Palermo in Sicily. Uh, to make us go 1-0 up in the 27th minute. A man that doesn't score many goals for us. Getting a crucial goal here. And it could be a goal that gets us our second three points of the episode. And we end up holding on for the 1-0 win. So two crucial 1-0 wins. We're grinding out the results here against these smaller sides. Sassuolo, not really a smaller side, but it's more Palermo who uh, came up from Serie B last season in this career mode. But yeah, we've got uh, quarterfinals against Roma next episode, which is going to be a really, really big one. Uh, hopefully making our way into the semi-finals. We've got some more Serie A action to hopefully secure our spot in second position, but we're going to see how things are going in some competitions. Obviously, we've got the Europa League quarterfinals against Roma, a team which we verse a lot in this career mode. Spurs versus Liverpool, an all-English final. We've got Everton taking on Schalke, so hopefully we get Real Batiste or AZ maybe, but yeah, a few teams in there that could cause a lot of damage like Liverpool. Uh, we move on to the Serie A uh, and we're still in third position. Inter two points ahead of us after 31 games played. It looks like Juventus has taken out the Scudetto, but we are going to still be fighting for runners up position. Inter just two points ahead of us. We let a few games slip this episode, drawing a few in simulation, but uh, Sassuolo still in fourth. 
Milan and Torino are still in that Europa League spots, Napoli and Lazio just in 7th and 8th as we look towards the Coppa Italia and as you can see there it's Napoli and Juventus in the other semi-final and uh, Juventus winning 2-1 on aggregate there in the first leg. We still got the second leg to play next episode. We're going to be playing at home in that one. We got Europa League action next episode. We got so much to do next episode in this part of my road to glory. So if you guys did enjoy, please smack the like button, subscribe for some more FIFA 19 and part of my career mode content coming at you guys. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description and I'll catch you guys on the very next episode. Peace.